Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is an important day because we're going to talk about the book Ponsonomics by Robert L. Fitzpatrick. Mr. Fitzpatrick is one of the most in-demand researchers and consultants regarding MLM worldwide. His book talks about the history of MLM, how it works, or rather doesn't work, in detail and how it is possible for such a fraudulent business model to not only survive but be thriving after all of these years of scamming unsuspecting victims. There are several factors playing into this, some of which I will summarize for you today in part one of this video. I am also excited to announce that part two will include an exclusive interview with Mr. Fitzpatrick himself. So without any further ado, let's explore the depths of this scam-based business model that was invented about 75 years ago by some of the biggest con men in American history and has since spread all over the world. Ponsonomics is a pseudo-economic, all-encompassing, delusional belief system that promotes the swindle of a Ponzi or pyramid scheme as a valid economic model that promises believers a fulfilling and financially rewarding way of life, complete with mission, values, leadership and worldview. The societal spread of Ponsonomics is necessarily accompanied by governmental collusion. The story begins in 1913 with Karl Remburg, who tried to get his piece of the cake during the Alaska gold rush, but being late to the party, failed to find any gold. He continued to China, where he tried his luck with importing canned milk and toothpaste, but failed on both accounts. In the 1930s, the vitamin industry in California flourished, so he started to invent various vitamin-infused products. The author explains this as following, and I quote, the mania for vitamins in Rambok's time and today is largely a result of advertising, public relations, marketing and salesmanship." End quote. Since he was lacking skills and wasn't really built for the hard knocks of sales, he looked for talented and experienced sales managers to distribute and market his products. Interestingly, he met one of his sales agents at a seminar of Dale Carnegie, famous for his books and seminars on adopting a sales personality. Dale Carnegie was an aspiring actor turned motivational speaker. He changed his name from Carnegie with a Y to a Carnegie with IE so people would associate him with the Carnegie tycoon family that he was not related to at all. At one of Carnegie's seminars, where he taught people how to become salesmen, Rambach met William S. Castleberry, who was a radio show psychologist. He got an advanced degree in psychology and called himself a doctor. Rambach's first impression of Castleberry wasn't a good one, to say the very least. In Rambach's biography, Castleberry was described as desperately short of cash, but he had a background in selling kitchenware and real estate. Castleberry introduced Lee S. Meitinger to Rambok's vitamin company called Nutrilite. Meitinger was a grave plot salesman at Forest Lawn Cemetery in California, where he managed a team of over a hundred salesmen. He also had door-to-door -door sales experience, even though he was said to only have an eighth grade education. Thus the very origin of MLM is basically three failed businessmen turned con artists, inspired by another con artist, which kind of puts things into perspective immediately. They already met all the basic requirements for the perfect MLM fraud, consisting of motivational speaking, the American dream of success and riches, questionable door-to-door -door sales tactics, manipulative psychology skills, faulty products, and the deep desire to be a wealthy person who is respected by the old money upper class that they so desperately wanted to be a part of. Castleberry and Meitinger later invented the plan, together for Ramborg's company Nutrilite, which included all the characteristics of what we know as multi-level marketing today. Castleberry even wrote a book on how to use psychological hacks to make it in the business world. Those were the first steps of implementing self-help to improve one's finances and see business as a mindset and overall philosophy to fully live the American dream. As a cemetery plot salesman, Meitinger learned direct selling, which brought in the idea of adding at least 50% on all charges just to cover the salesman's commission. Even though they would sell vitamins, the marketing plan wasn't necessarily about better health or a longer life. The real strategy was to promise distributors unlimited income and financial freedom. There was more emphasis on recruiting rather than selling the actual products. 
their so-called mechanics of sales were based on getting cuts from an endless chain of newly recruited salespeople and ultimately gaining a passive income from training and managing salespeople without having to play the field themselves anymore. Their plan was different from existing company strategies because they wanted their salespeople to have their own distribution chain, which sounds familiar to today's MLM's so-called downline. It is more than obvious that they were well aware of the pyramidal structure that they were introducing as their sales and marketing strategy. They placed themselves on top of their pyramid, but they knew that most others were doomed to remain at the very bottom. By now, it is very clear that in MLM there is little or rather no profit to be made on product sales. The people involved in MLM will tell you otherwise, as this must be a part of their strategy. If they started their pitch any other way, it would be clear as day that this has major pyramid scheme characteristics. The sales are made by recruiting new marketers, since their labor is the true currency in MLM. The marketer who brings in another marketer earns a commission of the new recruits that they make and so on. Exponential growth is promised, making it seem as there will be an endless passive income from the commissions earned from duplicating the success. As we all know, the structure must collapse, since eventually everyone will be recruiting, but there wouldn't be any real demand for the actual product. Exponential expansion is hard to grasp for a lot of people, including myself. In his book Ponzinomics, Fitzpatrick introduces the following riddle to further outline the fault in this business model and it goes as follows. Would you rather take $1 million now or a penny that doubles every day for the next 30 days? The answer is the penny, because on the 30th day this would amount to over $5 million. The problem here is, it takes 25 days to amount to only $100,000 and this explodes to over 5 million in the last 5 days. That means that only the first ones would benefit because it only blows up after establishing several levels below you. For the last ones in, it works in reverse. For they would have to recruit many more people in their chain to duplicate the success of the ones on top. The author outlines this by the following example and I quote. If one person recruited five others who continued the plan for four more levels, there would be 3,905 salespeople recruited. Yet as math shows, those at the bottom, 3,125, would need to find 12.2 million more salespeople to duplicate the success of those above them. 3,125 times 3,905 equals 12 million 203,125, end quote. This is rather impossible because the market would be flooded with salespeople and nobody would buy the product, despite the fact that it is virtually impossible to find 12 million people to recruit. Let's take it a step further. Looking at the widely used 5 get 5 plan, everyone would recruit in theory a chain of 3,905 people. 1 plus 5 plus 25 plus 125 plus 625 plus 3125 equals 3905. Theoretically, one would make a cut off of everyone below them, but the ones at the bottom wouldn't make a cut at all, because there is no one below them. That means, and I quote, the bottom level includes 3125 of the totals of 3905, or 80% of the total. Therefore, the bottom makes zero cuts, since there is no one below them, but the next level that makes 16% of the total, 625 people, also make almost nothing, since they each only have 5 people below them. Ergo, it doesn't add up for the last ones in. I know that this is a lot of numbers in a short amount of time, but before reading this book, I don't think I completely understood how people aren't making any money. I just knew they didn't. Now that is the single most logical way to debunk MLM's myth of endless recruiting chains. Only the top 4% of the distribution chain make money, as math shows not more and not less. Thus whatever a marketer tells you when they first pitch their idea must be false. There is no passive income that you can actually live off of. There is no endless recruiting chain. There is no getting rich quick. And to the people who signed up for a company like that and lost money, you're neither lazy nor stupid nor a so-called non-believer or loser. You're simply a victim of a straight-up scam. You are lured in by false promises, by marketers who manipulate you by acting like your friend, making complicated things look easy and easy things look complicated. 
You were probably told not to overthink things or blinded by some show-offish guys on social media who seem to be flying on a private jet every other week or someone you know who invited you to a crazy event with some famous motivational speaker and you felt like a part of something bigger. With their cult-like structures, they lure people in and ask them to abandon everyone who warns them about MLM. They will act like a family and shove their philosophy of success and careless profit gain down your throat. So guys, I know this was a lot to process today. It took me over a week to completely understand this and make this video. There is a lot more to it, but this video includes the very basics of MLM fraud. As I said, there will be a part two, including an interview with Mr. Fitzpatrick, and a part three will be all about the above mentioned political collusion. I hope you guys stay with me on this journey and join me on my next steps to getting to the bottom of this so-called business model. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel to help us grow and spread the message. I will also link the homepage of the author of the book pyramidschemealert.org. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.